Welcome everybody, thank you for coming to Cornwall Contemporary Gallery in Penzance. My name is Sarah Britton Mansbridge and I'm the director here at Cornwall Contemporary and we're delighted today to introduce David Mankin to you all. Hi, Hi. Hi. <laughs> hello, hello. This is David's seventh solo show? Seventh solo with? show, yeah. yeah. Seventh solo show and I think it's your fifth solo show with Cornwall Contemporary. It, it is, that's correct, yeah. So. And this show is called Frontiers. It is, yes, it is. Do you want to tell us a little bit about the exhibition yes, first? Yes, yes. Uh, so this um, uh, Frontiers is, is um, uh, a title which um, became quite important to me over the last 12 months um, because I wanted to try and push the boundaries of, of my painting process uh, because process is very important to the way these paintings um, emerge. So um, I chose that title because I really wanted to try some different things with um, my kind of process and my um, you know manipulation of the paint and um, different uh, types of composition so a, a lot of these paintings I, I've, I've tried to kind of push them in certain new directions so I, I've used certain new color palettes I've, I've, I've played uh, quite a lot with, with spatial illusion and um, mark making just to really see where that would take me um, and that's that's a really important part of what I do is is constantly trying to push my process to see what's beyond, mm -hmm. which is so that's why really I call this um, show Frontiers um, because I wanted to just to try and go a little bit further um, with the kind of the use of the materials, the use of my compositions, mm -hmm. uh, the use of the color palettes, um, all, all these different aspects which um, make up the painting. So. Um, and this is the this is my kind of largest body of work I've made um, and shown in, in, in a kind of public gallery. So it's, it's kind of really exciting. It's kind of also another kind of frontier for me in terms of putting together this kind of huge body of work um, in different sizes, um, different styles. So it, it's 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 very exciting. It's like a new frontier for me as well personally uh, to to achieve that. So. And it is a big body of work. There's 96 paintings. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's, yeah, 96 paintings. So just four off 100, which maybe I should have just pushed myself a bit further. Come on, David. Try so, better next time. So next time, I think I'll have to start a little bit earlier. So. It's, I mean, it's such a huge number of paintings. Yeah. How do you approach that? Do you go into it knowing how the exhibition is going to look or do you just go by painting by painting? I, well, I, I, have, I probably have... At any one time, I have probably 20 or so paintings on the go. Um, so I jump around quite a lot. Um, you know, I, I work on different paintings at different times um, because I, I, I want that, that those, those different emotions and those different feelings from different days all kind of put into the different paintings. So, um, so I don't start off with a, a plan of saying, well, I'm going to paint 96 paintings. Um, they kind of emerge um, through through trial and error, uh, through trying different things. I mean, like some some of these paintings, like the, the, where there's huge planes of colour. Again, I, I went through a period of trying whole new uh, palette of different colours and seeing where that would take me really. Um, and then often I will leave them for, for 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 days at a time or weeks at a time, and then go back to them and work on them again, change them, sometimes quite dramatically. Uh, I'm a great fan of um, the kind of, what I call the dramatic edit, because you, you get to a stage with a lot of paintings where you've worked on them, worked on them, you kind of like them, they're, they're, they're nice paintings, but they, you, you know, there's the sense you want more from it. Um, and that's when often I, I do make dramatic edits. And that often, not always, but often that kind of catapults me in a, in, a, in a new, a new kind of trajectory, which makes it much more exciting and almost thrilling in a way. Um, and you find out new things then. It's like you're almost searching for some elusive thing because you, you kind of, as you kind of manipulate the paint, um, all these kind of different images start to emerge from the, it's almost like subconscious imagery. Mm -hmm starts to kind of come come out of the canvas and it's you kind of keep playing with that and playing with that and you know sometimes it gets 
too tight and you have to kind of loosen up and change the direction and 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 and, and often that that dramatic edit can really um make a painting um come alive and and that's what i want i want these paintings to be alive you know i want them to have a a, a depth and a, a um a, a kind of a, an emotional connection um to to what i'm seeing and what i'm feeling um and that's what i'm that's that's the elusive bit of of, of, of the the painting that i want can i ask you a question yeah, of course yeah um the big and the little so you know when you do these great sweeps yes and then there's some little scratches yes and all that what's your sort of rhythm with that well i i i want i want rhythm is a good word because you know rhythmic space is is such an important thing in in, in painting terms so um, I, I, I kind of want that huge energy mm. that I, I feel in this, this landscape, um, but also I, I want that kind of delicate, you know, yeah. the, the delicacy of, and the vulnerability that you see in the landscape as well. So it's almost like, you know, I, I love the power of the Cornish landscape and the huge cliffs and the, the big seas, but I also love the kind of very vulnerable wildflowers that grow on the coast and, and, and the kind of bracken and the gorse that gets sculpted by the winds. So it, it, it's all those shapes and textures that I love as well as the kind of the huge rhythmic energy. So that's what I'm trying to get, that feeling of those um, contrasts, I suppose. Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah, it's like a, a dynamic. It's like a dynamic because that's what I see when, when you know, I, I'm sure you've all walked on the Cornish coast path and you, you've seen that beautiful kind of huge energy that you get from the, 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 the sky and the sea and the kind of boulders and the rocks. But then you've got the lichen and the bracken and the gorse and the weeds and the, the beautiful flowers in, in, in the early summer. And it changes all year, obviously. So it, it's that, it's that, uh, and those those things, those oscillating contrasts, uh, I find really exciting, mm -hmm. and that's what I, I try and put into these paintings, uh, it, all, all those aspects, um, uh, so that it, it, it kind of evokes. Mm -hmm. It evokes. I want to evoke. Yeah. Yeah. Mark, Mark has actually come all the way <laughs> from, from, from America Chicago <laughs> <laughs> to come and see your exhibition. He jumped on is, a plane on Monday. Yeah. <laughs> um, why not? In the past, you have shared public, publicly shared in your book. Yeah. Uh, I think even in, in passages catalog and and on Instagram for certain. Yes. Yes. Uh, you have shared drawing and collage and yes. and and your books after books after books of yeah. of preparation material. Yes. Yes. 96 paintings. How much time did you have for preparation <laughs> material? Well, I, well, the, 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 the preparation material is, is you know, you, you kind of, you do, I, I, I do all these tiny sketches, um, as you've probably seen from, from, from these uh, sketchbooks. Uh, so these are like small sketches that I make out of, out of uh, using crayons or pens or pencils or whatever I've got around. Um, so they're quite, they're quite quick. Um, um, but these of often serve as a way to kind of create a bigger painting. Um, so I, 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 I spend quite a lot of time on my sketchbooks um, and then cutting bits out that I've got tiny little sketches where I wanted, I just liked a particular bit. So the, these are my kind of what I, I, I don't really call them sketchbooks, I call them source books because they're, they're, these, these are the, these are like sources uh, for you know a, a certain shape or a, 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 you know a certain way a line you know it's a soft line or a hard line you know you're you're playing with all these different things in, in a very quick fire fashion and this is like a mini collage uh, and again you know the, the sections of this that I think well that could make a large painting mm -hmm. and I, I I might just look through this one day and say okay I'm gonna I might be slightly kind of painting might not be going anywhere fast and I might think well I'm gonna I'm gonna try that big shape there that curve and that and this dynamic white um, line and try that and, and see where that pushes the painting and that's that's the really s super exciting thing about the process is that you you can choose to take that risk 
and, it, and with painting, it's one of the very few things in life where you can actually choose to do that. Mm. You can pick up the brush, you can mix the paint and you can do it. Mm. And you can take that risk with it. Um, and you, there's very few things in life you can do that with. Um, so, and that's what I do, that's what I do. You know, I will just, I will, I will, it's almost like an impulsive thing um, that I, I do sometimes. Um, but often when, when, you, when you take that leap, and it is a leap, it's a risk, it's a leap, or whatever you like to call it, something else happens. And something, sometimes it's a magical thing that you would never expect it. So you end up, again, searching for that elusive quality that is new and it's, or it's, that, it's, it, you know, it's exciting. It makes you feel good because you've taken that leap. Um, and I think you could do that in any, any, whatever you're painting, whether it's abstract or still life or, or portrait, you know, you, you can, you know, it's really um, playing with the paint and seeing what happens. Um, and can I, sorry, can I just ask you, how faithful are you to the sketch? Do you allow the painting to find its own journey or do you really want to recreate what you've sketched in your book? Uh, well, I, I don't think, no, no, I don't want to recreate, but I, I, I think um, it's important. I mean, I have taken some sketches and um, small sketches and then recreated them as, as much larger paintings. They never end up exactly like the sketch mm -hmm. um, because they, you know, a large painting has its own journey once you start working on it. So, um, so I, I use these these types of um, sketches really as a way to try new things on a larger painting. So, so it's a mixture. So I'm mixing these sketches with what's there already on the canvas. Um, with the way I'm feeling, what I've seen that day or what I've seen a few weeks ago on the coast path. All, all these things are in my mind. So I'm just using these different techniques to, to uh, I suppose, spark different ideas and to kind of find exciting things that are going to make me um, uh, push the painting forward in the way that I want it to feel. So. Um, you know, it's like this this line here, which, I, which I, I kind of love this little line here. Um, and, you know, you could actually take that line and do that with a huge brush on a big canvas. Um, and it would be like a really lovely thing to do. Um, and I might just do that one day. I might just say, well, I'm going to do that on that canvas and I'll just do it. Can and I just ask a question? Yes, of course. Do you practice the music? <laughs> <laughs> well, well I think I think with something like that, if, if I if, if I had a big canvas, let's like, say like that over there, and I wanted to kind of cover so it went off the edge, um, I, I might do it in pastel first. So I might take a bit of pastel and just try the motion, and then I'd mix a paint, maybe like that size paintbrush, mix a huge amount of paint, and then do it and just go, yeah. And you, you, you've got to, you've just got to dive in, really. You've got to dive in. And how do you choose your palettes? Um, the palettes often, you know, emerge as I go through the painting. Um, so I don't choose a palette. Okay. No, I don't choose a palette. I, I kind of, and that's why a lot of these paintings you see here have uh, lots of paintings underneath. Mm -hmm. um, because most of these paintings probably have maybe 10, 15 paintings underneath them. Right. So the, the palettes develop as you just go through that whole process. Um, you do like shades of blue though, don't you? I do like shades of blue, yeah. But <laughs> I, I have, I, I do absolutely love shades of blue, um, but there are so many beautiful shades of blue. Yes. Um, and, it's, yeah. it, and it's those, uh, the kind of, the, the multiple shades that I find really interesting, um, rather than too, too garish. So I, I like, to kind of have that kind of tonal balance, mm. um, but I have and tried. Changed by what's underneath, anyway, aren't they? They are, yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah, absolutely. yeah, yeah, of course. So, and that's what I love when because you never and what's beside it, and what's beside it. So it, it's the blues morph mm. with all the other colours that you use. If you use a, a, an orange underpainting, for example, mm. where that painting had had a kind of that was uh, had, as, as you can see from the the large kind of turquoise. Um, passage there it had 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 kind of an orange pinky underpainting so which I've kind of scratched through and wiped back so um, 
Yes, so I, 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 yes, I do like my blues, yes, of course. Is, is that how <laughs> the change of palace? It's, it's like looking at the sea and the sky. I mean, you can look back on the land now. You see, yes, you're yes. You're seeing the stubble and the grasses. And That's the, right. That one is... The roots and the... Yes, absolutely. That, that, that one, I suppose, uh, it was quite a different palette for me. Um, mm, yeah. The, yeah. the kind of pink and the red and, and that mm. kind of vibrant green. Um, but I, I love it because it is, it is, it is, it is, has that kind of feel of a kind of uh, one of those beautiful kind of pools that you see on the coast sometimes at low tide, and uh, it's on a beautiful sunny day. And it's a contrast to the wildness as well, because this is agriculture, this is planted, this is deliberate. Yes. And yet you've got these wonderful colours you know, on the fields. In, in absolutely, in well. absolutely. Yeah. I mean, the, and the trees as well. I mean, the colours in Cornwall are just. Mm, of the scale, light. the light, the, yeah. the colours. Have you always lived in Cornwall? Not always, no, no. I, I'm originally, I was originally born in the Midlands, so, but I've lived in Cornwall for 20, 22 years now, so. Um, and, ha and did you train as an artist? No, I'm, I'm a self-taught artist, so um, I was hoping to go back to university at one stage, but um, didn't work out, but, um, so I'm, I'm self-taught, basically, so. Um, and I've been painting like this for about 11 years now. So. Will you teach me? <laughs> <laughs> well, the beauty, of, the beauty of his work is it's almost unteachable. Yeah. I mean, what he is saying to you is the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm overeducated. Uh, uh, and I, I, I have too much going on in my head. Yeah, yeah. conflicting yes, yes. and stopping me from yes, painting. Yes. And, and you have the advantage of just blowing yeah. away. <laughs> well, yes, you could, you could say that. And I suppose when I started, I had no preconceptions. So, um, so I just started and it was, it was using my own thoughts and what I wanted to do. Obviously, I researched many, many artists and I found that very interesting and certain artists inspired me greatly. Can um, I ask, sorry David, when you started, I feel like most artists when they reach a way of working in an abstract style, they tend to have started painting in a very traditional, realistic, yeah. figurative fashion. Yeah, yeah. Did you always know you wanted to become an abstract artist or did you arrive at the same process going through fig figurative well, art? Well, or? I suppose when I was, well, going way back to when I was a teenager, I, I, I did A-level art and I was always my kind of, I, I love Monet's paintings. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and I particularly liked his paintings because of the atmosphere in them and the use of colour and, and the fluidity of, 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 of paint. And obviously they were kind of figurative, um, but I love the kind of manipulation of the paint that you could see and the, and the atmosphere he created. That was the main thing for me. So, um, so I suppose I, 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 I tried to paint like him when I was a teenager and I recreated actually one of his <laughs> paintings, which I've still got in my studio. Um, so, but I, sp and I suppose over the years I did bits of painting and most of it was figurative. But when we, when we, when we came to Cornwall, probably in the uh, early 90s, uh, mid 90s, um, you know, I, I discovered Peter Lanyon. Um, and, you know, I was con transfixed by his uh, later paintings and uh, his expression and then I got kind of interested in the other artists, the other Cornwall from the Cornish school, uh, the abstract artists of the 50s and 60s and then I got interested in the kind of New York school and then I got interested in you know Deep and Corn and people like that so so I got more and more inspired by the kind of abstraction element because I I I, cause I knew I, landscape was always important to me and I had a kind of I suppose a kind of it, it had an emotional pull to me um, and I could see in their, their art, um, certainly kind of somebody like Lanyon, um, that the, the kind of how he was trying to express um, his, his love of the, the landscape. So he certainly inspired me greatly. So I suppose I, 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 I kind of pushed myself that way because that's... That's, that's what I, you loved. I, that's what I loved, yeah. Um, but, but I always remember, you know, when I was a teenager, kind of the, the kind of Monet and the, the atmosphere is very important to me because I, I want my paintings to have atmosphere in the same way that, that, that Monet's paintings do, mm. uh, but in a different way. So, how do, you, how do you retain when you're working on 20 paintings? I admire mm. that because I can only put them back to read. <laughs> I like to have more than one, but three would be maximum. Because then when I come back to it, I know sort of what I want from it. But yeah. if you've got 20 on the go, and they're space, they're place specific, you know, you're painting a place, 
do you remember when you go back to it what that place felt like or do you uh, well I have, I have I have thousands of photographs you know um, so you uh, and often some yes some paintings are more sp uh, place specific others develop over time so they're almost like subconscious so you know something might emerge in a painting I think well that that, that really reminds me of that walk to mm you know, Senin Cove or wherever. Mm. And so I think, oh, that's interesting. You know, it, it kind of starts to chime and then I look at some of the photographs I've taken and then I'll kind of push the painting in, a, in, a, in, 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 in that direction. So mm. I don't necessarily start out, I'm going to do a painting of, of like that place. Of no, no, I just let it all, I suppose, it's all about filtering really. I suppose I, I use all these different techniques or um, like the you know, walking and photographing and the sketching and the collage. It's, it's all a matter of filtering to create ideas um, that will, will, you hope, kind of come out. And that's, so that's really important that you get out to do all those things, as, long, as, as much as being in the studio and painting. Yes, and you, you, and you, painting. yeah, absolutely, because I want, I want, you know, I want to drink in all that beautiful energy that we have here, you know. Wherever you, wherever you walk on the coast path, and you know, walking this week has been absolutely magnificent. Mm -hmm. so. <laughs> so, <laughs> sorry. Um, I, I love your paintings. Thank you, um, thank you. I found them personally very inspiring and kind of my kind of nascent journey as an abstract painter. Okay, like. okay. Um, and I, I see that um, the predominant medium is acrylic. There's That's lots right. of other things going on yes, there. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I'm kind of trying to move away from acrylic and into oil, but okay. it takes ages for it to dry yeah, and that doesn't lend itself to the dramatic edit no it and doesn't I was do, you, do you ever use oil and do you ever incorporate that into your paint? I, I haven't used oil for a long time um, I did use oil as, as going like I said going back to when, when I was a teenager but I haven't uh, when, when, when I started to get back into my art uh, about 11 years ago um, I found acrylic quite interesting because it did dry quickly and because my process is you know, um, quite changeable and things transition. I like that sense of transition. Um, so acrylic suited me, um, uh, even though I know some people hate acrylic because it drives too quickly and, um, you know, but I, I, I like it. I, I like that fact that it will dry because I know that I'm going to change it and move it and edit it and and, and I like all the all the layering and, and the kind of like the journey that the painting goes through. Whereas with oils, I, 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 think I know myself, I would get utterly frustrated with it. But I probably should try some oils, actually. I probably should try oils. It could uh, be your next frontier. It could be, it could be, it could be. So yeah, I mean, it, it, and I, I probably should in some ways. Um, so, but I love the acrylics. Thank I think. you. Going back to your process, how do you know when you finish a painting? Um, <laughs> Well, I think it's, it's, it's a very difficult, it, it's got to talk to you. It's got to have that, I suppose, and I keep saying elusive quality, but only, and only I know that, I suppose. <laughs> but um, it's got to have something in it that makes, makes my kind of heart beat faster. Um, because it's part of, the, they're all journeys, they're all part of me. Uh, they're, they're part of this landscape. They're kind of, they become almost like, you know landscapes of the mind really you know because they, they, they have their own personalities um, because they've changed so much they've been on their own journey so and I, I need the paintings to have that journey I, I, I find it very difficult to do a painting with just a few layers and you know quite simple palette I, I, I have to have that the scratching and the depth and the, the interplay of colors so that's why I, I have to work on them um, so it's almost you get to that point when you know you've worked on them and they, they start to coalesce, I suppose. Um, but I have to give them time. They have to kind of gestate, I suppose. They, I like, I, they have to mature in, in, in my mind and on the canvas. And it's only when they get to that point that I think, oh, that's getting close, that's getting close. And, you know, something is talking to me, making me feel... Good. It's a fine balance to actually go further or leave it as a level. It's a very fine balance and it's really difficult sometimes, mm -hmm. that, that, that point mm -hmm. when you decide to leave it or not, or whether you edit it. Right. Um, yeah, I love your work. Thank you. Can, can you say at what point you choose a title? Because your titles are so poetic and they just work with your... Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, I, 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 sometimes I choose a title before, as a painting develops, because 
it helps me um, develop the painting in a certain way. Um, because I love poetry and poetry is, is like painting in words to me. So, and um, if you can find a kind of line from a poem, often that will um, inform the painting. But other times I'll make a painting and then I'll, 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 I'll look at um, certain poetry and try and find something that works with the painting. Right. So it, it depends really, mm -hmm. it depends. But uh, poetry is very important to me because it, 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 it's a really part, important part of the creative process for me. That's but clear. <laughs> yeah, because it really does, because I, I, you know, I want that connection with the viewer and the poetry often helps the painting come alive more to me. Yeah in terms of what I want to say, even though I may not have known what I wanted to say in the first place, it, it seems to kind of help that coalition of mm -hmm. thought and emotion and process, mm -hmm. if that means yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely, it comes across in the yeah, words, so, um, the words and the Yeah, so the words, the words at the end are very important, so I spend a lot of time mm -hmm. um, when I've made my paintings kind of thinking about the titles, because they become it's, it's like they become very important to me mm. and it's like al almost like packages the painting or finishes the painting uh, it's like the final part of its journey really. mm. <laughs> so. so you nurture each painting I, 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 yes I, I think that's a good way of putting it They're, they are they are nurtured for sure um, and that's why they're all in a way they're all they're all me but they're all kind of quite different um, so I think they have a they have a, you know I think they have a certain style, but they are all different um, because I'm constantly trying different things. And um, when you say you're trying different things, so what have you tried? Diff and you said your palette for these. Is there anything else that you've tried? Well, I think the palette is is one thing, um, and also the use of composition is very important. Uh, so I've, these two over here, for example, where I've used huge kind of planes of color. Um, possibly s the, the kind of one on the left is slightly less worked than some of my paintings but I kind of I, I, I love the sense of that the way that feels and I you know so they're 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 bold big shapes mm. um, and I'm always I'm always thinking about that how to create a kind of abstract painting with bold big shapes but also have that depth and the texture and emotion that I want um, and that's quite tricky sometimes. That's quite mm. tricky. Those two in particular made me question design. Um, I, they, they sort of jump out as being new and different for David Menke. Well, I suppose I was trying to kind of, because you know, a lot of my paintings have a lot in them. For example, you know, yeah. there's a lot going on, and, and these ones I wanted to try and not have so much going on. So mm. I wanted like say bigger planes of colour, but I still wanted that depth yeah. and that play and that tension. Um, and I think those two, you know, I, I'm really pleased with those two paintings because they, they, they have a simpler composition, but they are still, there's still a huge amount going on and there's a huge amount of depth and th there's, there's an immersive quality, which I like about those two paintings. Um, and that De depth is an interesting idea. It is, yeah. Uh, because if we go back in our history, depth means perspective. Yes. And yes. Stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but when I look at your work, very seldom do I see through the painting. I yeah. mean, there's always something that brings me back to the surface. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. depth has to do with, with the rhythm of the painting. Well, I think I think yes. There's a I, I I suppose that there's a lot of rhythm in in my paintings. That kind of pulse that I want. Um, but I, I I have tried to play with the kind of spatial illusion in some of these yeah. paintings. So there's a lot in some of them. There's more tension, um, and there's more rhythmic space, um, and that really excites me because it, it it it's 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 what I feel in the landscape and what I enjoy myself when I'm when I'm painting physically. Yeah. You know, so I enjoy that rhythm of how that painting develops um, as well as seeing it out, out, out on, on, the, on the coast you know so I think I have tried to play much more with those kind of overlapping shapes and illusion and and you know certainly rhythmic space 
is, is, is really important. And because um, it comes back to wanting the paintings to have a li a, be alive. Mm -hmm. I don't want I don't want them to just sit there. I want I want people to kind of feel them and feel some energy, mm -hmm. feel some vibration. I suppose. Mm -hmm. um, that's that's what I you know want you to see, and I, I want to feel that too when I get to that point of, um, you know, coming to the end of a painting. I want them to have that that vibration and energy. And do, are they always one way round for you as you produce them, or do you sometimes flip them and decide they're more yeah, interesting? Yeah, I, I, like I, I flip them all the time through through the whole process. Um, it's difficult with these big ones yeah. um, to flip them. So. <laughs> <laughs> so they, they tend to kind of, you know. <laughs> things like ceilings that get in the way. Yeah, ceilings and, you know, uh, yeah, lights and so on. But So, yeah, the big ones are more difficult to flip. But, um, yes, this size, for example, the 122s I'm always flipping, or the, the 102s, 102s. But as you go through the process, you know, sometimes they, they'll, they'll, they'll start to sit and you think, well, that's, that's, that's the right way. But often I'll turn it one way and it, oh, that looks quite good, and then I'll work on it that way, and then it'll go, go in a new direction, so. Mm. Yeah. Following on from that, could I ask, do you have any um, feeling about what size of painting is going to be before you start, mm. how you organise? Uh, you've got sort of range of sizes, and many artists don't do that, they actually tend to stay within a smaller range. They do. I'm quite interested in how you actually look at what you're looking at and decide how big it's going to be, or whether you actually could make a smaller one much bigger should you choose to. Well, I do, I, 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 do, I do often make smaller ones bigger. Okay, that's so, so, for example, just around the corner here is, is the small panels in the grid. There's one small panel, which is a 20 by 20 centimetre panel, which um, when I did it, I loved it so much that I made that <laughs> painting. Okay. This this one here, the bright painting. Yeah. So I, I haven't really looked at that. So could you tell me, did you add things into the bigger one that weren't in the smaller one? Well, or it, did you expand? The, I, I, I suppose it, I, 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 it's quite similar to the panel actually. So yeah. um, and but I suppose the, the some of the underpainting and the mark making is different. You know, you, you, you're not rendering it exactly, but it's it's a very interesting process to take a small painting. Yeah, it's hard. Make, <laughs> it's, it's, it's hard. It is hard, and you have to add more into it. Yeah. But um, and it, it, it makes it, you learn new things though by doing that by kind of upsizing something, uh, and it's a it's a really interesting part of the process. And I don't do it with all my paintings, but I do enjoy that upsizing because the big yellow one around there. Yeah, I've, I've got that in the corner of my eye. <laughs> it is is also from a small <laughs> small work on paper that I made about five years ago. And do you have favourites of sizes that you always find yourself turning to? Um, I, you know, I love I love the big sizes. I love this size, the 102, 102 size. It's it's a really lovely size to work on. Um, the the 122s, 122 is a, 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 a good size to work on. I sometimes find the landscape format more challenging. Um, so, but it, the one the one over the fireplace it, that 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 that's been heavily worked on. But I I love the way it's turned out. Now. So do I. <laughs> That's one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm glad you like it. I do, I do, I love it. I love you it. said it was my least favourite. No, I, mean, <laughs> I don't think I'd ever say that. <laughs> do you have favourites though? Are there some that you have to find hard to let go of? Well, I, this, I do have favourites. I do have, do have favourites. Yeah. Um, yes, I do have favourites. Uh, and it's, it's difficult to. Don't tell us, but well, yeah. which ones? I, I mean, I have favourites for different reasons, for example. Yeah. Uh, that, you know, it's, it's very difficult to say, but there are some paintings that you do think, yeah, I, I, that, that's a really lovely painting, that means so much. Um, there's, a, there's a small dark one just around the corner here, which, which, which is one of my favourites, um, mm -hmm. because of the way it developed and, mm -hmm. you know, and the way it, it's like it got the shape of a bird on it, which came from a, tracing around a bit of flotsam one day, and it just kind of brought the whole painting together. So there's things like that when you when you do something with a painting and it it, it transforms it, mm. and it or it kind of blossoms. It almost blossoms, yeah. you know. And and I think that's just wow. It's kind of like magic, really. Yeah. It's like magic. Yeah. <laughs> so I think you're very right about not stopping when you think it's good. It's good enough mm. when you could push it further. Yeah. I think that's a really yeah. important thing. I'm going to go back and do some bold 
editing on a few things yeah. that I thought were probably okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think it's it's, it's worth trying it. It's definitely Enemy worth. Of the best, isn't it? It, it? it is because I think when you do make that, when you get to that point, that which I call a precipice point, you you often you just got to think and say, well, I want try try something completely different here. You know. Even if you cover it in orange and then wipe it back and then work on top of it or whatever, you know, just do it. You know, mm. you, you're not going to lose anything. You know, it's, you, you're going to the, the chances are you're going to gain so much more. Just don't do it in front of somebody else because I don't. No, do it. <laughs> <laughs> that's very bold. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a that's a no, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> just, this I mean, you've achieved so much mm -hmm. in quite a relatively short career, really. Yes. I mean, hundreds yeah. of thousands of followers yeah. on social media, yeah. sell out shows, people coming from America yeah, just to yeah. see your paintings. <laughs> but it's still really obvious that you are constantly pushing yourself. Yes. Yeah, so Do you feel a weight of kind of success and you have to recreate that? And but is that that's the driving force? I suppose there, there, is, there is a sense of that, but I, I know now having made... Um, yeah, done all these shows and, you know, that I know it's a process and you, you have to kind of be true to your process and be, you have to be authentic, you know, and, you know, keep, keep experimenting, keep trying, um, keep, you know, keep observing, keep your curiosity, you know, because I, 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 I see that that's, that's the way that makes the paintings what they are. Um, you know, I, I don't want to just, you know, be a paint, somebody said, well, he's just churning out another blue one or whatever, you know, it's, I, I want people to kind of, you know, to be excited by the paintings when they come into an exhibition like this, which is why I love doing these exhibitions, because it, it's an exciting thing, I want, I want it to be exciting for people, so, and I want it to be exciting for myself, because, you know, painting is, is not easy, it's a struggle to, to, to get to this elusive Thing I was going to say, want. it's a lot yeah. of hard work it's, over the years, isn't it? It, 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 it is. just represents a huge amount. Well, well it, it is hard work, but you physical know, it, it's it, it's a lot of physical effort. But I think it, it's it's worth it because you know you learn so many things, and it's it's enjoyable, and it's 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 one of the few things you can do personally that is so rewarding mm. to to your to your to your mental health and your your whole state oh, of being. Absolutely. You know, it's it's incredible. Um, so, and it becomes a way of life, I suppose. It becomes a way of life and a way of looking and a way of observing and a way of recording and, uh, you know, thinking about your life and reflecting, all, all these things that, that, that come out through the, the painting process. Mm -hmm. I think that's a, that's a really fascinating thing too. Is there a tool that you could not do without? I mean, obviously a paintbrush, but <laughs> is there anything else? Um, well, I think I've got this kind of... Um, old kind of uh, wallpaper scraper that is covered in paint um, and I, I use it for these these thin scratches yeah. and that 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 is something I probably couldn't do without They're these kind of tools that make these very thin lines but I also love my charcoal too as you can see so mm -hmm. um, um, and I love using charcoal um, expressively mm -hmm. uh, how do you fix that with, with fixative, with, fix, spray. with spray fixative, yeah. How do you finish your work? Well, it's, I use this fixative mainly because it it's also acts as a varnish, um, which is why you, you'll see they have a slight sheen on, mm. slight sheen on. Um, and what's your favourite board? Is it board or is it canvas? Well, I, I, I mainly paint on canvas because of this, this the, I quite a large, larger paintings in board are horrendously heavy and, mm. you know, so, but but so, um, the Cadsworth Dawn painting is on on board, mm. um, and I do like board because you can kind of you can be, rough. You can be quite rough mm. with it, um, and you can sand it back if you want, and you, you know. So, it, but I, I find with board sometimes it, it needs you need to kind of build a paint quite a lot mm. more th more so than on canvas mm. for me. I don't know; it's got a different type of surface but I do I, all the panels all the small panels around there are, are wooden panels so I, I do enjoy mm. working on those because it's quite a physical process mm. you touched on this earlier I have difficulty with the square okay it's like it's already composed there's nothing left for me to do because it's square right but a rectangle whether it's landscape or portrait 
needs something done to it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, so what, what, what's the challenge of the square? Well, I, 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 I like the square. Yeah, I, I love it. I, I love the square because um, certainly for abstract work, um, it, 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 it suits it, I think. And I, I, I find that, you know, you can play with the shapes much more easily, in a way, with a square compared to a, you know, a, 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 a rectangle. Um, and I, I, I like it because it, it almost has a harmony to it, um, which I like. Um, and it's almost like a, win it's like a window yes. in, into, into something. Um, and it's not, it's, you know, with a landscape painting, you know, often you're in that kind of situation where you're, 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 you're becomes more landscapey as a painting, mm -hmm. whereas a square forces you in, in a different direction. Um, and because I'm kind of painting, you know, my, the feelings of the landscape and the sensory experiences, I, I, I like the, the, the square because it, 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 it gives me that, um, sense of difference that I want uh, rather than painting a, a scene so mm -hmm. um, not that I'm exactly painting a scene but you know uh, but I think uh, the landscape I mean I do paint you know this is a big big landscape painting um, so and this this was quite a challenge you know because it was uh, you know trying to kind of marry this whole painting together I found quite challenging um, but it was good because it, 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 I, I love this kind of deep, dark, moody painting. Mm -hmm. um. <laughs> Do you have to stand back quite often? Because you're so into it, right? Being well, close to it. yes, I, I think, I, I, yes, you do. Of, of, well, certainly this size, you have to stand back and look what's going on. Mm -hmm. um, but do you ever take them home, or do you always leave them in your studio? Do you um, feel you have to put them in a domestic setting? No, like I don't. I, it's, sometimes it's quite interesting to do that. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I don't, I don't, I wouldn't say I often do that. Mm -hmm. I, they tend to just uh, sit in my studio and when, when, but when you see them in a gallery like this, it's... Yeah, it's, it's, it's that it's moment a, of coming it, in yeah, and seeing yeah. your entire collection <laughs> it, is, it, is, it is one of the most, well, there's only so many moments you get like that in life, you know, because <laughs> you can only produce so many shows, but yes. it, it is pretty special, yeah. yeah. It's pretty the atmosphere special. of your studio is probably quite important, that allows you that freedom to do things. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty rough and ready, my studio. Yeah, that's, so, um, I mean, that's, that's, you're not constrained by yeah. trying to please something or somebody, you're pleasing yourself. Right? No, I'm pleasing myself, yeah, yeah. pleasing myself. Um, so, I suppose that's why these paintings, you know, I, d I, don't, I don't think, well, I've got to do a painting like this or that, or that. I just do, do what I want to do and how I feel that day, you know. I've got so many questions. No, far away, far away, this is, this is the event. <laughs> Um, do you keep a studio journal of how the things are progressing? And not, phys that? not physically, no. But in my mind I do, because I suppose I, I do think about the paintings quite a lot. They, they sit in, they kind of, uh, they sit in my mind as they develop. So it's as much unconscious as it is conscious. Yeah, and I'll take photographs and, you know, at the end of a day and then I'll look at them and then I'll leave them and I keep maybe I'll keep look at them occasionally or I'll, I'll flip them around or I'll crop into them a bit or see because see. sometimes you, you do a painting and then you might crop into a section of it and think well that could work so you then cover that painting with that crop so but so you're still you're retaining the palette and the feel of that painting but you're you're just you know developing. yeah developing it so that that that, that can often work as well um, so, but I don't, I don't write down diligently, you know, kind of, you know, about what, what's happening with the paintings. It's more of a, but I do think about them quite a lot. It's almost like often I think the paintings um, out, if you know what I mean. They're kind of, they, they kind of, so I, I put a lot of thought into, subconscious thought, I think, into how the paintings develop. Um, which probably I could, if I wrote that down, it would probably be quite interesting, actually. Mm. So. It's just that so much of, of, of the work is to do with psychology and mm. how you feel and, you it's know, absolutely. your life generally. Of course it is. Yeah. Absolutely, mm. yeah. A lot of these paintings, like I say, they're kind of almost, they're inspired by the landscape, but they become, they become through their journey and process, almost like landscapes of the mind. Mm. Because it's, I, 
I try and put so much into them and you know how I'm feeling and what's happening and different things that are ha happening in your life or, or what you're reflecting on. Um, you know, which often you, when you're out walking, you, you, all these things begin to unlock in your mind in terms mm. of where you've been and different experiences, different memories. Um, so all those things subconsciously come out through the painting process. You know, you can't, you can't shut them away. They're, they're, they're part of you, aren't they? Or, of course. You know, so. mm. What about the anxiety that some artists sometimes feel about their work? <laughs> <laughs> How do you deal with that? Um, I keep going, <laughs> <laughs> I guess, because, uh, yes, of course, I struggle, I have my self-doubt, um, you know, and, you know, halfway through a body of work like this, you think, you know, I haven't got anything, I haven't got anything, you know, I need, I need to, you know, so you, you, there's, there's a pressure, there's an anxiety, you, you, you know, you're not sure, but I know, having done this uh, for so many years now, you've just got to keep going, and you have to work at it, you have to struggle, and there are good days and bad days, um, and, you know, but eventually things do emerge. And is your inner critical voice your friend? Uh, I, I don't know whether it's my friend or not, but, um, you know, you, you have to kind of, you have to work with your inner critic um, and you, you, know, you have to balance, um, you know, and some days the inner critic wins mm -hmm. and other days you put it in the box. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and get on with it <laughs> so yeah. you know some days are like that you know when you're more robust than others yeah some days you're feeling quite um, vulnerable and exposed in terms of your doubt about yeah. paintings or where and they're I, going i see beautiful things and it just makes me anxious because i think i can't represent that how can i represent that and that you know that can really sort of freak me out well yeah it can block you yeah, yeah. of course it can yeah, yeah. so and you, you and I know a lot of artists, they, they find it very difficult, you know, to get going sometimes. And you, you've really just got to do these these sketches or collages and you've got to work your way into it. You've got to find the thing that excites you, that fires you up um, constantly. Um, and, and then things will emerge. But it's, it's, it's all a process. It's all a process of, you know, thinking, recording, trying, um, taking risks, just all these different things will, will kind of bubble up um, and then things will begin to happen. But there are days where, you know, yeah, I do struggle and I think, well, I, you know, I can't do it anymore. I can't do it. You know. Spirit doesn't move. Does, yeah, so, but the next day is different. Or, you know, I, I, I do my big marks or I do something and I get excited again or I go for a walk. You know, so. Walking is quite important. It's, it is very important, yeah, because I think it... it a, A, it's beautiful to walk yes. on the coast path at any yeah. time of the year to get the feel of the landscape, but it's also... It puts I, you in your place, doesn't it? It does, yeah. We, we all, we, we, yeah, we're fairly insignificant in terms of, you know, um, nature and the landscape. So, and, you know, the, the Cornish landscape is so wild and beautiful and, you know, when you're walking out on the coast alone sometimes, you know, um, it, it, it kind of unlocks so many things. You know, both the colours, but also in your mind, in terms of uh, you know the way you're thinking about your work and your life, and you know your experiences, everything, and that rhythm of walking, um, I think unlocks those things, and I, I find that very very valuable, and I think that's why the paintings sometimes have a reflective quality. So. Can I ask, um, yes. so there's two disparate questions, a lot of people have asked questions that I thought you know, that would be asked. Um, <laughs> one is picking up on your keeping going yes. uh, side of things. And so does that, um, so obviously that involves all sorts of tricks, but do you find yourself slipping into a, crit a, a routine each day or each week that you stick to rigorously in order to help you do that? Well, I suppose I have periods when I'm doing, for example, sketching or collage um, uh, and trying different things um, you know for example at the moment I haven't painted for several weeks because of the show and getting the, all the framing done and getting the photography and so on and so on so when I go back to the studio I'll probably maybe do a new sketchbook or I'll, I'll look through these sketchbooks um, I'll look through my collage book I've got here for example uh, I may do some crops of them I might do some works on paper um, so I'll just kind of try and get myself 
going again. And then I'll maybe have have some sketches, and I'll think, well, I'll, 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 you know, I've already got some canvases in the studio that are kind of like halfway through, so I may change some of those completely, um, you know, and, and cover them up with something or do do something different with them, just to kind of throw me back into the process. So I, I don't, I wouldn't say I had a rigorous routine. I tend to be quite chaotic and jump around um, depending on how I'm feeling. So you could be painting like at midnight some days and then first thing in the morning another time. It, uh, yeah, absolutely, yeah, it, it, it varies. Um, so I, I, I don't have a rigid schedule of um, mm. doing different things, but I, it's really how the mood takes me. Mm. But turning up is the, the important thing. <laughs> just, 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 just being there, and whether you, whether, you, whether you just do a small collage or a sketch, or whatever you do, it's, it's, it's being there and, and being present in your work. So, and, and you know, that, that could be reading a book about um, something, or, or often literature is, is a very good inspiration for, um, you know, making me think, well, that's a really beautiful passage of words or a bit of poetry. That, and then, you know, you start sketching and it, it, the, the kind of, it all starts to feed, it starts to filter. So, and all those things I'm looking for, they're, they're just like, I want that, those little sparks in my mind, kind of. Do you use music as well? I do use music. I love music, and I always paint with music. Um, I couldn't paint silently. Yeah, I wonder, I wonder if that was part of that. No, I could. It helps filter out all the other things. Yeah, and, and I have these kind of headphones, and mm -hmm. sometimes I'll get that. You know, you just kind of completely zone out, and away <laughs> I go. It's all music choice. It's varied. It's varied. You know, I love. I love kind of. Um, you know, quite kind of. Uh, uh, quite emotive music, kind of piano music, but also I, I love kind of some kind of uh, ele electronic yeah. dance music and so yeah. on, which is very energetic yeah. and powerful. So, you know, just, just various... I, I love the moods of music and I use the moods of music in when I'm painting um, because I, you almost want to get lost in that mood. Because it's I, another <coughs> layer, doesn't it? Your paintings, you'll remember music as well. So. Yeah, you do, yeah. And, and I, you know, I love pairing music with the paintings, and you know, so all these things like music and poetry and the paintings and the kind of the the, 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 the all the all the thoughts and the feelings I've had from from the walking, all all filter down um, to, to these sketchbooks and then on onto the paintings, um, and that's that's the way that's 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 the way I kind of enjoy. Um, you know, I suppose living through these paintings, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think it's advantage in that way to have all the same on the go because you're not starting from a blank. At any time, no, right? no, 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 because you know, you've got all these different yeah. options that you, yeah. you, 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 that are inspiring. You, know, you want to be inspired. We all want to be inspired. So, so it's finding those inspirations that, that mean things to you, you know, um, and, and that's what I'm always looking for and searching for. Um, whether that's a kind of broken weed on the coast path or it's a bit of, you know, a quote from Virginia Woolf or it's a colour palette that I've seen somewhere or, you know, like that, the green sign, the co-op sign, you yeah, know, that's a really interesting green. You know, you, you might just see something and you clock something and you just try it or you try something. So it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a kind of, it's, I suppose it's just a way of observing and being and, and doing. But I think... I think the, the best bit of advice is probably um, just to keep trying. Mm -hmm. and, that, and that's that's what I do. And, and trying, and when I say trying, it's not just, it's trying different things, different materials, different approaches, different perspectives. It's, it's trying different things. Mm -hmm. And that's small marks, big marks, big brush marks, small, you know, everything. So, you know, it's, it's it, just trying, trying is one small word, but it's, Expand it. Staying curious. Staying curious, yeah. yeah. Stay, absolutely. I think if we can all remain curious throughout our lives, mm. whether it's painting or anything we do, mm. passionate, you know, it's being passionate about something and applying that passion mm. in the way that only you can apply it. So you referred earlier to some of the painters that you know, influenced you historically. Yes. Um, obviously, there's a lot of. Uh, artists functioning now in, in and around Cornwall that take inspiration from the landscape. Yes. To what extent do you find yourself occasionally trying to position yourself within that group or something, or is it much more internally you know, insulated, as it were, from, from that sort of... I, well, obviously, you do look at, you know, other painters, um, 
but I, 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 I suppose I, I just try to do my thing <laughs> in, the, in the way that I, I like to do it. And that, that's all I've got, really. That's the way I like to do it. So I don't, you know, I, I just try and stick to my, what I want to try and do with the work and the paint and the, the response or my response to the landscape. Um, so, uh, because I think painting is a very personal journey. Mm -hmm. um, yes, you obviously you, you kind of look at different influences. You, you obviously we all as human beings get influenced by what we mm -hmm. what we observe and what we see, and you know what what makes our heart beat a bit faster. You know whether it's color or a particular style of painting or whatever it is. But um, so. But I, in terms of influence, I would, I, I'm just, I suppose I'm just trying to kind of just be myself. That's and on that, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. I'd like to thank you all for coming to Cornwall Contemporary to hear David speak, and thank you all for your questions. You're amazing. Thank you very much. Thank you.